Brother, I got the same last name as my wife. Wallace! Hallelujah. Good to see everyone this morning. If you come to hear a little touchy-feely message, you come to the wrong church. If you want to hear the truth, you came to the right church. If you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, we'll do you right now. If you need the Holy Ghost, I don't got to preach. You just come on up and get the Holy Ghost. Whoa. Oh, that scared me. I thought I was punching the clock early. Lord is good. Only when I'm doing good. All the time. Come on now. All the time. I've been through some of them all the times, all the time. Amen. Amen. Especially at work. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Do I need to turn it down a little bit? No, me. I want to share with some scripture and a thought this morning. I got the message yesterday, the text message, uh, get a message ready. Oh, I got one ready. And then I thinking about it. Oh, wait a minute. I got another one. I want so I started working on that last night, this morning, finished it up. So it, it's never been preached by, by me, I, I have to say. So it's not out of the archives. This is a brand new edition. Hallelujah. But the, the, uh, we're going to start out of Luke, the 21st verse, verse 36. You go, oh, you're good. Watch ye therefore and pray always that, ye, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Then it's in uh, oh, I get settle down. Psalms 141 verses 1 through 3. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. Give ear to my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth as the as incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. Hallelujah. I'm going to title this message, Knowing the Signs. Knowing the Signs. When God hears our cry when we first walk into an apostolic uh, service or one of the first times we walked into apostolic atmosphere that we walked in and this is different. I feel something. Right. I feel something when we walk in the door. Yeah. I'm not going to go over our history because you know how bad my wife was. <laughs> we only came on Sunday morning for three months. When they didn't invite me, Brother Bob, what, or Bob, Coach Wallace, they used to call me, I used to coach football. And that's how I knew some of the people that worked there. The other people, I didn't like them because I went to work with them. And I even threatened one guy. If he walked up to me in church, I'll, I'll punch you right in the face. I was lost. Amen. But I went every Sunday morning service, and I felt something and as soon as I walked in the door. Nobody dared preach to me. I'm just here. And, and when people would ask me, well, I heard you're going to that lighthouse. The epidemic lighthouse? Well... I go because my wife makes me. I lied. But the signs were there. Yeah. And that Sunday morning coming in, I felt something yeah. even deeper than I ever felt in my life. And I sat back, and my wife seen me start crying. Yeah. God, the conviction, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost was on me that morning. And the preacher preached the message. The wrong reason to come to church. I couldn't wait till he shut up. I needed to get to an altar. Why? Because I knew there were signs. What I felt that morning, what I experienced that morning, is I'm back here weeping. And I didn't even look at my wife. I said, honey, they have one of them altar call things. I'm going to go this morning. Right. Well, I didn't know that God was convicting of her because I didn't want her to see me cry. 
And when I went up to that altar, I just wanted a change in my life because I seen the signs yeah. in my life. Amen. I was trying to feel the voice of my life. I coached football. I coached uh, baseball. I had a lawn service. I was on the police department. Uh, I was on an Air Force National Guard, and I worked a regular job trying to find something that would fill that void that I was missing in my life. I got introduced to it at an apostolic church that believed in repentance and baptism in Jesus' name with the evidence. What's the signs? What's the signs? Hallelujah. I, wanted, I never had an issue with the Old Testament or the first four books of the gospel. But when you get into Acts, what is Acts? I know my kids know. What is Acts? It's, it, yes, it's how the early church is really the history of the early church. Now, and everything after the history of the early church, it are letters written to the church. So I like to say to people that don't walk this way, what do you read? What do you read my mail? That was addressed to me. I'm not, I don't want to go to your house and read your letters or your bills or anything like that. What written to me? These words were written to you and I. Amen. They were written down. And, mm, the apostles heard the words, and someone sat down and wrote these words for you and I. Yes. That's right. But these signs, hallelujah. In Mark 16, 16, and verses 16 to 17. Amen. I don't like that. Amen. Good job. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be what? Saved. Saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. What name is that? Jesus. Jesus. Hmm. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. That's a sign. I need a sign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I try to break things down in my own mind on my grade level. I'm still stuck in about eighth right now. But uh, I've seen a guy, uh, a commercial for that glass. You know how they fix the windshield, safe light. Or, and this man and woman, I can see my wife and I doing this. But he's loading up his car and he puts a two-by-four through the window. And I'm not thinking how he's going to fix the window. I'm just wondering, there's enough room in there for one person. How's she getting home? I try to psychoanalyze everything. As you know, I'm not a good doctor, but there are signs that we must look for. When you get older in age, you've got to know the signs of, of uh, having a heart attack, having a stroke, getting up in the morning and falling over and saying, hey, I found that me self-diagnosing myself, I'm always wrong. When I collapsed that day and said, hey, my leg's asleep. Hey, my arm's asleep on this side. I couldn't figure out what was going on. But I, I said, let me check my sugar. Yeah. My sugar was fine. I said, well, I probably slept wrong at a pinch nerve. I self-diagnosed. I didn't know the signs. Right. Yeah. Got in the car, started driving about two hours later. All of a sudden, man, this ain't right. Right side starting to go numb and my hand's oh. going numb. Man, this ain't right. So I pulled over. I did something called Google. <laughs> and it says, signs of a stroke. I said, oh, that's not good. I was wrong again. Went to the hospital, got diagnosed. I had a, had a small stroke anyway. And I called my wife, and she was so concerned. She goes, well, how are you going to get there? Where is Cedar Point? I said, don't worry. I'll get home. The doctor says, I said, yeah, my wife's up there, and they're going to come down. Well, I went in the car, sat there for a while. I said, ah, I'm driving home. I drove home. I, now I know the signs, what to look for. If I get up, things numb, hey, take me to the hospital. Give me some aspirin. Right. I'm having a stroke. But these signs... When we first get in and we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we're a different person. We feel different inside, don't we? We feel like we never felt before. It was no high that alcohol that I used to drink could get me to what I felt that day. When, when, but when God hears your cries and it's sincere, God responds and forgives us. When we repent and we are baptized in the name of Jesus... 
He fills us with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. My wife and I, and over the years, I've seen, I say probably literally hundreds of people come to church. And for sometimes for the first time, we had a woman come to our church, and she sat with us that day. She goes, it, the little history on it, about six months prior, her husband had died. Of can he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. They were a different denominals of faith. They paid a guy to come in, and he absoluted him or whatever. Well, he wasn't absolute. But my dad, my stepdaddy, as you know, he went and he planted a seed. Well, have Bobby come over. He, he could explain. He said, listen, what, I can't explain it. You can't explain it to someone who doesn't experience yes. repentance and baptism in Jesus and a yeah. filling of the Holy right. Ghost. But he said, I know one thing for sure. I felt different. Yeah. And he would illegally drive a car all the way to Sister Lakes with his oxygen tank. Driving his oxy tank and knocking the steps, they wouldn't let nobody else come. But he'd come and he said, Well, let Bobby come. And he came, he had planted the seed. And we explained to him they didn't have a Bible in the house and we would read the Bible. And we told him the plan of salvation. And we shared this scripture out of Mark what would happen to him. It was Pentecost, he only lasted three weeks. He was diagnosed, said he had three months, he had three weeks. We went in there, they never prayed together, they never did any things like that. They acknowledged God. And nothing that we did was great, I'll be honest. If it wasn't for that 70 uh, uh, some year old man who had an experience and relationship with Jesus, we'd never been in the door. But we, we talked to him about how you have to have the Holy Ghost and how you have to be baptized in Jesus' name. Yes. We got home 9 o'clock that Sunday night on a Pentecost Sunday, and he said, Hey, Bobby, you've got to come to our house. Something is wrong. When they said it to me, no, something is right. He's sitting in a wheelchair in the living room praying. God touched him. He stood up, had his hands up. Hallelujah. He was speaking in tongues. All right. All right. They need to know. And now they knew something was up and we baptized in Jesus' name. And in that living room was 16 of us. They were praying. They had an experience of what Jesus was and what Jesus could do. He died just a week later, but filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. His family seen the signs. Six months later, his wife come to church. She was of a she was of a different faith, and she came that night and repented. God filled her with the Holy Ghost in the baptismal. Come on now. After she repented. That didn't save her. That's a starting point. That's just a starting point. She never came back to church after that. You can't live off of that moment. You have to build on it. That's why you need a pastor. That's why you need instruction and guidance. Because you'll know the signs. Jesus shared the signs of what would happen even in the last days. In Matthew 24 and 3. If you, better, you better be watching for the signs. You don't believe what the word says. Just turn on your news. Get a newspaper if you can find one any nowadays. Everything's online. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered said unto him, Take ye that no man deceive you. For money, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. You say amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that it not trouble with, trouble with, for all these things must come to pass. But this is not the end yet. We look what's happened over in Israel. Israel don't play. God has got a remnant there. And they are, uh, they're taking names right now. They're just wiping these terrorists out. I ain't got an issue with that. Hallelujah. On October 7th, they decided to go in and kill them. A bunch of women, children. The things that they did were horrific. And the people who did, they got them all on Facebook. And they're clapping and happy that they did something this evil. But these are just some of the signs that saying, Church, you better get ready. Amen. I'm warning you. Only those that are here, those are filled with. Oh. 
I have a friend that I talked to this week. I've known him over 25 years in the church. And he had left his job and left his, sold his home and moved down south. He wanted to be under man's ministry. He told me this week he walked away from God. I'm just going to study at home. I said, you can't be saved. You need a pastor. Yes. You need to get, find you a church. Let me tell you, you could come to this church if you don't like, well, it's not a perfect church. Well, and you find another church, and you think that church is perfect. It won't be perfect when you get there. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> you better know the sign. Hallelujah. God is fixing, hallelujah, to come on back for those that are ready. Amen. For those that are asleep in the Lord, they're getting called. Hallelujah. You can't play games. Be sad if you missed out. Be sad because you don't want to give up things in this world. Amen. We had a family come in. We had a great revival back in the uh, mid-90s. And we had a family come in at another church. And the, her husband never had the Holy Ghost. And he came in and got the Holy Ghost. He was so excited. And that night they made a mind. We're going to start coming to this church. After a few weeks. Their family talked them back into the other church. When you worship more than one God. You're going to have confusion. There's one God, hallelujah. Israel always got in trouble when they started worshiping other gods. There's one God. His name is Jesus, hallelujah. Ooh. And 1 Timothy 4 and 1 says, Now the Spirit speaking expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving ye to seducing spirits and doctrines, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sheared with a hot iron. I, hallelujah. I knew some people that pastors and ministers and evangelists that have no longer in the truth. They have fallen away. I had a friend that he's, I, we're called to Mexico to be missionaries. And he went through a lot of struggles, him and his family and his children. And he says, I need to move to Texas. I said, you, want, you know what you need to do? I said, we have a large Hispanic community in our city. Reach out to them. Right a home we used to live with, there was a trailer park called White Pines. We went over there, and my daughter wanted to hand out tracks for our Easter program. And they're all, they were all Hispanic. And we knocked on the door, and I'm talking to him, and he's saying, see, si, yes, and no, yes, yes. And I went to the, it took me about the third one, and uh, these words come into my mind. No hable English? I'm a little slow sometimes. God calls who he sees to call. He has a plan in your life. Hallelujah. But you got to know the signs. You want to know if you're in truth? If they don't preach out of this word, they don't say that you need to be baptized. They want to say you could be touchy-feely. Repeat after me. Don't make me throw up. You need the fire that changes you. The fire that gets you excited about living this, this, this truth. I was excited when I came into church. Matter of fact, I was so excited, I testified twice in one service, and one was an offering. <laughs> Never lose the fire. Yes. Never lose that desire. Never. There's signs coming. You're going to miss out. Don't be satisfied with coming to church and taking up a pew. Yes. The most you sing in the church to right. the altar. Amen. That's right. Blessed name of Jesus. That's right. I said the altar. Yes. That should be the most you sing in the church. Yes. Why we're in a time that we need to pray. We need to get a hold of something. We got to get a hold of this Holy Ghost. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. We need to study. We need to read. Hallelujah. I went When I went to the Air Force uh, from the Army, it was like night and day. And I remember... I didn't want to get washed back. You know what washed back is? Yeah, if you were dumb enough and couldn't get through the first week, you had to go back another week, transfer to a whole different unit. I stayed up and I studied. I stayed up till 11 o'clock. Then I would set my clock for four and read and study. The guy with me came from the same unit. He was a college-educated young man, and he went to college. And I remember going in. Brother, I was scoring about 96 and 98 on my tests. Yeah. 
I'm not that smart, but I got it. It took study. It took me breaking it down and understanding it. It took study and consistency. Well, he got washed back. <laughs> he college educated. He wouldn't argue about the an- questions. Said, well, the answer is right there. Right. It's studying the word and understanding the word. You can't stay at home and be saved. Amen. You've got to have the word. You've got to have instruction. I try never try to make some midweek service with my job. I, I come to sit. I'll sit way in the back. You know why I sit in the back? Because I take my shoes off. <laughs> I might have Crocs on. I might be barefooted, just so you know. Amen. Don't come and check it on me back there, man. Yeah. Can, I do. I got, I got issues with my health. Yep. But you know what? That's all right. I'd rather be back. I want to hear the word. I want to be instructed. I want to be guided. I want to be corrected. Listen, sometimes... Just like my toes are getting stepped on. And I'm barefooted. Why? Because I need to be broken. I need to understand the signs. We're living in a day and an age. Don't play with God. Don't play. You think, well, you got time? You ain't got time. You got to get right now. You have to be right now. That's what I said. The altar should be the most used instrument in the church. Yes. When's the last time he came to an old-fashioned altar? Oh, it's quiet. In 2 Peter 3 and 3, Knowing this first, that ye shall come in the last day, scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, where's the promise of the coming? To sense the fathers fall asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning. I heard this message, well, not this message, because I served in one of them churches that had more than one guy, because we were confused. But I know it scared me, and I wanted to be ready. I watched the movie The Thief in the Night. They had a mark. That was an old movie from the 70s, and I don't know if anybody ever seen that movie. But they put a 666 in their hand. I said, I ain't taking that number. I went up to the altar and prayed. I was praying, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I wanted to be saved. I didn't know they were all one. This is the same message. No other time that I can look back in my life and see the fulfillment coming through. The Bible wasn't written here in the United States of America. That's right. We mess everything up. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, but we were established on Judeo-Christian values. We used to be proud of that. We're not proud anymore. They have a different kind of pride. Hallelujah. They want to bring the sin and make uh, less than a half a percent of us agree with that sin. Mm. We're living in the last days. Yes, we are. We're living when nobody can, is afraid to get up and say, I stand for God or Jesus is Lord. All right. And you have a negative comeback to that. Jesus is Lord. Amen. He's fixing to come back. We got to get ready. I got to get ready. You examine yourself every day. Amen. When I sit down in prayer, I say, I'm, not, it's a, I'm afraid. God, I want to make sure something I got hidden in my life. I want to make sure... Uh, oh, oh, ooh, ooh, I, oh, Lord, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I want to be saved because I told you I'm a sissy baby. I don't like pain. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you what. My knee's hurting. I'm grumpy to be around. Mm-hmm. That's my wife. I'm grumpy. She coming to Sunday. And I was hurting Wednesday to come to church. And my knees were hurting. And my shoulders were hurting because Art visited and he wouldn't leave. <laughs> Arthritis. That's cold. It's not a meme. But living this life, you can't go wrong. But knowing the signs, am I getting weak? You need to know the signs. Am I drifting away? Am I missing church? Am I coming in late? Am I not caring anymore? Am I just coming every few weeks? I'm covered. You're not covered. You need to be around like-minded people. This is what encourages and strengthens being around light-minded people. That, that just, you know, I got a firecracker. I call one sister firecracker. Some days I feel like the old log. Just throw me on a fire. I may be wet, but it may, I'll, I'll catch on. I'll, I'll catch on pretty soon. We have to live this life like there is no tomorrow or there is not a next moment. Jesus is fixing to come back. What a horrible. You can't live off your mom. You can't live off your dad's experience or your brothers or your sisters. Amen. I don't care if your grandfather was a pastor. You have to have that relationship for yourself. Amen. What a shame it would be when that trump sounds 
You come looking for mom and she gone. Or your grandchildren, or your wife, or your husband, gone. Why? Because you wouldn't respond to the signs that you needed to get back into church. That you needed to get focused, hallelujah, again. Get that excitement, that renewing. How do you get it? You come back from an old-fashioned altar. Never be ashamed to go up to an altar. Never be ashamed. I don't, I, I care less. You need prayer? We got preachers, they're fixing, they're just like, mm. they want to pray for somebody. Yeah. Oh, I see how you pray. Don't even, don't even try to put down. <laughs> Why? Because they want you to experience that again, to build that relationship with Jesus. Know the signs, church. Hallelujah, brother. Yes. 